Hey guys, Josh here from Sportitude, and today's shoe review is going to be a little bit different. What I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be talking about a category of high mileage neutral running shoes and going through essentially my five picks for the first half of 2020. So we're sort of looking at that January to June period right now and the reasons why I found these shoes successful. So uh, reason being, it could be shoes that I've ran in myself and I've enjoyed or the other um, factor is shoes that I've had a great deal of success fitting on the shop floor here at Sportitude. So it'll be a slightly different review this one, um, but I'm going to call out some great features of each of these shoes and why I have enjoyed them and why I found them easy to fit. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's get stuck in. So today's review is high mileage neutral running shoes and what we're going to be doing is this is my top, top five picks um, so far. So I'm going to quickly hold them up. So Nimbus Light from ASICS, great shoe, first of its kind. The Socony Triumph 17, this shoe here. The New Balance 1080 version 10. The Mizuno Wave Sky version 3. Just have to double check on the back. And then the ever reliable Brooks Ghost 12. So um, the reason I've grabbed these shoes is because they've either been on the market for roughly 10 to 12 months themselves, or at least a minimum time frame of three months. Now, the reason I haven't grabbed a couple of shoes that have just landed, like the Glycerin 18, for example, um, is because I haven't got enough time uh, or enough read on fits with that shoe downstairs. We've certainly been fitting it, it's been very successful, but um, I wanna give uh, some, some, get some good data essentially on how these shoes have worked downstairs and what's been successful about them. So um, I'm going to start off by talking about um, the, the two shoes that I've really enjoyed running in over the last three months myself. So um, in no specific order, I'm going to grab the Nimbus Light, this shoe here. So it's a it's a great little addition to what ASICs have done in their running shoe category. So obviously play on the Nimbus franchise, Nimbus Light. It isn't the same as your traditional Nimbus. They've taken components out of the midsole to make it lighter, as its name say. And also the midsole itself is a softer durometer. So it's a really plush running shoe underneath the foot. Not necessarily targeting a heel striker. Um, ASICs have got the gel Nimbus for that category. So your heel strikers tend to strike ever so slightly out the front of center of gravity. So therefore they need a little bit more cushioning, hence the gel pod in the Nimbus 22. So this shoe here is more targeting that runner that was probably going to make more contact with their midfoot, potentially forefoot as well. And the setup through the outsole um, sort of replica or assists that strike pattern. So full purchase to the ground, full ground contact as well. And the reason I have liked this shoe for myself is one, it's really light and it's really cushioned. So this is the shoe that I'll grab when I'm going out for a long run and it's not necessarily something that I track with my garment. I don't care how quick I run in this shoe, it's more about clocking the minutes out on the road and knowing that I'm going to be protected and comfortable. Takes an orthotic really well and a great success not only on the shop floor but with my orthotic rotation too. So from time to time I will run with my orthotic. Um, depending on how my body's my body's feeling and and what I know what the session is going to be coming up. So um, yeah, great shoe, love it, breathes really well. It is only standard width at the moment, so D men's B ladies, but that's okay. We may see that change in years to come. So um, yeah, there's a good uh, a, a lot to like part of me about the gel Nimbus to, uh, light through here. The next shoe we're going to cover is the. New Balance 1080 version 10. This little shoe here, ladies and gentlemen, is pure bliss to run in. It is light, it is cushioned, and it's got a very responsive feel on toe off. Almost has that slight rocker sole to it as well. Um, the reason I have personally enjoyed running in this shoe is similar reasons to the Nimbus Light in regards to the fact it's super cushioned, uh, but very, very light. However, I will grab this shoe over the Nimbus Light if I'm potentially gonna pick the pace up a little bit more on maybe a tempo run where I just want a little bit more protection. Um, this shoe being on eight mil offset, great purchase for my midfoot strike pattern. Um, still caters very well for heel strikers as well. But the um, the Fresh Foam 10 midsole is is great. It's a, it's a great execution on cushioning and responsiveness. So um, kudos to New Balance for for really going back to the uh, to the engineer's table and redesigning this shoe, because I mean the version nine was okay, I kind of liked it, but the version seven and version eight um, for me weren't that 
Fabulous. I didn't enjoy running in them. Version 9, fell in love with it again. But this guy here, fantastic. Love the New Balance 1080 version 10. And also, great call out from a fitting perspective, we have widths on offer. So three widths in the men's, we've got D2E4E. -E, and in the ladies, we've got a B and D. So it makes life a lot easier as a fitting specialist when we have the ability to grab wider widths or narrow widths to suit someone's foot shape. So fantastic shoe. I like the hype in it too. Nice and strong, but really, really breathable too. The next shoe I'm going to grab is the Sockety Triumph 17. So I, early days, uh, was using this shoe for some longer mileage runs, and I really, really liked it. The reason I liked it is because it's just a very responsive midsole for what this shoe is all about. So it's actually marginally heavier than your 1080s and certainly heavier than your Nimbus Lights, that's for sure. But um, that's okay because this shoe here is all about providing plush comfort on your longer runs. 8mm offset, um, the Power Run midsole, which is the first time they've really rolled this out in their Triumph series. Um, I liked how they've executed uh, the midsole cushioning in this shoe. It's protected in the areas needed to be and nice and responsive underneath the foot as well. The other feature which I do like about this shoe is the crystallized rubber. So you can see the orange portion of the midsole underneath the, uh, the shoe through here. The crystallized rubber can be a little bit thinner, lighter, but super durable. So the asset in this shoe is the midsole. There's no question about that. So how do you protect your number one asset? You've got to have a really good outsole because that is the protection between you, the runner, and the ground, the environment that you're running on. So your bitumen pavements, etc. So a uh, great outsole, it's not intrusive, it's not stiff, it's not heavy, not overly flexible, which is really important with a shoe like this. You don't want it to lose form with such a cushion responsive base by having too much flexibility. So um, yeah, Saucony, uh, the team at Saucony really designed a fantastic shoe through here and I can't wait to see what version 18 is all about, which is a few months away now. So um, had a lot of success fitting this shoe down uh, on the shop floor. Main reason being is it's sort of targeted that runner that wants to throw in a nice, call it a heavy shoe into their rotation. It's all about pure cushioning and plushness. They're not fussed on essentially the speed they're running at. It's more about clocking the miles out the road. And that's exactly what this shoe does. So nice little update um, from Saucony and looking forward to, as I said, what the 18 is all about. But one to consider. The next shoe I'm going to talk about is probably been the easiest shoe to fit in the last five or six years, especially retail, period. And it is the Brooks Ghost 12. The reason it has been so easy to fit is a, uh, is a number of factors. Widths, it's got a lot of widths on offer. It's stable neutral, so it can cater for a mildly over pronated foot type and also a super nated foot type. It's got a perfect combination of a good cushion base, but also really responsive as well. And it's on a light package too. So. The Ghost 12 um, has been a favourite of mine over the last 12 months and the 13's um, not too far away, but uh, the Ghost 12, easier shoe to fit um, for that specific foot type or um, that we're talking about. So neutral, mildly overpronated, someone wanting a perfect combination of cushioning and responsiveness too. So for someone who may be getting back into running um, and you may not want to spend top dollar on a premium cushion shoe, but happy to just come down a category, this has been fantastic. It's so cushioned underneath the foot but also really responsive as well so with that in mind it's a versatile shoe okay so if you're a runner that may not have two or three shoes in your rotation and that's okay that's a majority of people out there this shoe here is fantastic for your longer runs it's got enough cushioning and it's light and responsive enough for your shorter tempo runs as well so um, great shoe here Brooks Ghost great execution of the upper nice and strong very breathable internal heel counter fits orthotics with ease um, and the other reason being, as I said before, widths. So when we're looking at the ladies, we're going 2A, which is narrow, B, standard, and D for a slightly wider option. In the men's, you've got a D, which is standard, 2E, and then 4E as well. So three widths on offer. It just makes life so much easier fitting good shoes when you've got a variety of widths to grab. So fantastic by Brooks there. Brooks goes 12. Great little shoe. Last but not least is um, one of my go-tos for someone looking for plenty of cushioning underneath the foot and they're a neutral foot type and that is the Wave Sky 3, okay? Now this shoe here is a shoe that I've done some running in um, early days when I first got my sample around about oh, 12 months ago, um, give or take. So what I found with this shoe was, um, was a very cushioned, 
base underneath the foot. And the reason being is they've actually got three densities of foam underneath the foot. So sometimes brands can overcomplicate things with what they're doing um, with whether it be an upper, a midsole, or an outsole. And I looked at it on paper and thought, three densities of foam, that's just too much, Ms. what are you doing? Um, however, <laughs> you got to put a shoe on your foot and you've got to take it for a test run before you can truly have a comment on a running shoe. So when I put this shoe on my foot, one, first step in, incredibly comfortable. So a big change on the Wave Sky 2, which was a successful shoe for us down on the shop floor. Um, and the second thing about this shoe was the introduction of the X-Pop cushioning system. So X-Pop, you can see that little yellow foam, which it's just here. Now that's intertwined with the two layers of foam, which is see Euphoric and Euphoric X underneath the shoe through here. So the white and gray foams blended together to work like that wave technology that Mizuno have, uh, what is that patented technology. And the X pop sits just underneath that or in between that. So you've got the X pop midsole starts right from the heel strike zone and runs right through to just before your toe off point underneath your first metal tassel through here. And it's a really strategically placed to give cushioning in the areas you need it. And it's a gradient X pop foam. So as you go through to the forefoot, it tapers off to give you that responsive feel. So um, again, it's not the lightest um, high mileage shoe. I'd probably put it in the same category as your Sockening Triumph um, in regards to weight. Subtle difference between the two of them. But the reason I do like this shoe from a fitting perspective is, you guessed it, widths. Widths are on offer, so it makes life, again, so easy. Men's, you've got a D and a 2E. Ladies, you've got a B and a D. So standard and wide widths on offer in both genders, which is fantastic. The other reason um, I do like this shoe is full ground contact underneath the shoe through here. So the previous Wave Sky 2 had a bit of a cutaway trussic system, which has had the, the traditional sort of wave plate technology splitting the midsole in half. Um, and when we saw this, obviously on paper before I saw a sample, I was honestly a little bit nervous because your Mizuno runners are very loyal runners. They, they tend to not like too much change. And when this shoe did land, um, I was, again, as I said before, a little bit skeptical about what it was going to do. But running in it, putting it on, and getting it fitted on the shop floor, um, my sort of concerns were put to the side very quickly. Um, foreground contact, what that does, it provides a smoother transition through your whole gait cycle. So you've got a point of contact with the ground the whole way through, from heel, mid to toe off. And for your midfoot runners that may look at this shoe, you've got plenty of purchase with the ground as well underneath the outsole through here too. So, there you have it guys. That's my little take on the five easiest shoes to fit in the first half of 2020. Hopefully it's been of benefit to you at home. If you've got any questions about these specific shoes, you can drop it in the comments field below. And as I said, we will have a link to all of these shoes and my independent reviews on them. So I'll go into a bit more detail in regards to the outsole, midsole, upper, and what profile runner could consider them. Um, until next time guys, happy running and we'll see you on the road. Take care.